I started uh, two weeks ago with uh, opening the subject of uh, overcoming a critical spirit. Now, first off, I can't go any farther without saying thank you for your many prayers. I was out with back spasms last week. Anybody else have those? Get those once in a while? Oh, man, boy, when they hit, they'll just lay out, right? Very, very painful. And, uh, in fact, I was here at the church, and it just finished uh, getting ready to send something out for the Apostles' Update. All of a sudden, it just hit. And, uh, boy, those are humbling, huh? They are very humbling. And thanks for your many, many prayers, and also uh, many expressions of, of care. And, and uh, so I wanted to make sure I, I thank you for that. Overcoming a critical spirit. That's a challenge, isn't it? When I was growing up, my father would pastor congregations, and uh, he, he somehow he'd get called to these little startup congregations, and that were maybe having a hard time getting going. And he worked full time in the corporate world, but he also pastor congregations, they would call that tent making ministry. And uh, there was this one little church out in the desert that I can think of in particular. My sisters and I had a lot of fun these week. You know, it was a, the house was air conditioned and we'd have people over from the church to, uh, you know, have a barbecue on Sunday afternoon. And um, see, my sisters and I knew where the air conditioning uh, vent was. And it happened to be positioned at just about the height of a, a place as you'd gone through the kitchen and picked up your burger and your chips and everything. And people would come walking by and they'd hit this air conditioning vent and all across the, all across the room would go their potato chips. <laughs> <laughs> We, we had the best time in the world. Sometimes, sometimes when you spend a lot of time in church, uh, you know, and your dad's the preacher, sometimes you can be a little disrespectful. And uh, sometimes we would, uh, my sisters and I would, would uh, put, you know, take some of the usual hymns and we'd put new words to them. For, for example, the, the song, Trust and Obey, I don't know if we're, we're not singing that today, I don't think. You, I know, once I tell you this, you'll never hear it the same way. <laughs> <laughs> We'd say, trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. That's how it's supposed to go. Well, we'd, instead of singing that as the verse, we'd sing Gripe and complain, you'll go insane. <laughs> <laughs> Gripe and complain. You know what? Uh, uh, for us, this is uh, being having a critical spirit is really nothing new. We've seen it, I think, ever since uh, humanity was was, was uh, kicked out of the garden. Things haven't been quite right. And so it's easy to look at it to develop a critical spirit. We talked about a little bit about that last week. I want to continue talking about what, what exactly is a critical spirit. It's a really an obsessive attitude of criticism and fault finding. With the uh, ultimately what happens is you end up tearing others down. And the word I bring this morning is that which I I pray will bring healing and deliverance if you have experienced this or if you have been a perpetrator of a very critical spirit that God has grace God has power you know they, the greatest hope for human transformation doesn't come from Dr. Phil or Oprah or anybody else it comes from an encounter a radical encounter with Jesus Christ amen, amen. Jesus always sought to build up, not to tear down. And Jesus himself said, from the heart comes, and then he listed various things, the thoughts, 
that brew inside of us and that comes spilling forth. It's really a heart sickness. But thank goodness that we have the great physician who is here and through his Holy Spirit wants to encounter us in a very real way, bring us healing and deliverance. The critical spirit usually dwells on the negative. It seeks for flaws rather than good. Have you ever known that person gripe and complain? Usually, you know, you can count on something just wasn't going to be right. And it just becomes tiresome. Because there's always going to be a problem. Generally, folks with a critical spirit have very little control over their tongue. Or their temper. Or their tendencies for gossip and slander. Paul said that they're... These sins were worthy of death in Romans chapter 1, 29 through 32. So what causes a critical spirit? Sometimes uh, just that we learn it and grow, and it grows with us in our own home. If there was a parent or somebody in our own home that was very critical and very harsh, it's very easy to pick up on those things. So I call that generational sin. Maybe it's been going on way back to, you know, several generations back. Another thing is negativity, a bad attitude and, and a negative view of life. Some folks just in general have a very negative view of life. Sometimes it comes because of unconfessed sin in a person's life. Perhaps what they're doing is they're letting, you know, the yucca go out over here, but in the meantime, they have things in their heart that they have never had an opportunity to get right before Christ, to experience His love and His forgiveness. Romans chapter 2, verse 1 tells us, Therefore you are inexcusable, O man, whoever, whoever you are to judge. For in whatever you judge another, you condemn yourself. For you who judge practice the same things. So, in other words, if you harbor unforgiveness, it kind of goes together. Unforgiveness and bitterness towards someone, you know, that, that you know, that's what, that, that can foster and, and build up inside of you. Hebrews 12, 15 tells us, looking carefully, lest anyone fall short of the grace of God. Lest any root of bitterness. What did it say? Well, what? How did it start? A root of bitterness. How did it start as a root? And then it comes forth and it manifests as fruit. You see, the power of the cross has the power to deal with the very root itself. You know how annoying weeds are. Anybody love pulling weeds? <laughs> you can think you got the weed, got the weed, pulled it out. And I'm talking about a different kind of weed here now. Some of the kids get excited. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> pastor, guess what the pastor talked about today? <laughs> Talking about a root of bitterness sometimes gets planted deep in our heart. But Christ has the power to get down there and not just deal with the surface level stuff, but to get to the very heart of the matter. Sometimes critics being a, having a critical spirit starts with insecurity. It's often a subconscious means to elevate one's own self-image. In other words, if I can put others down, it makes me look a little bit better. At the heart of that is pride. Pride forever tries to position us somewhere in that tree of the knowledge of good or evil. Remember that tree in the garden? That's what pride does. So inwardly, they may feel more important, or that they know just a little bit more than you do. So they got more stuff on Anybody, have you ever experienced that? 
I heard a groan. <laughs> Maybe these folks should have jealousy toward the victories of others. It can often be the cause of criticism and belittling comments. Sometimes popular ministers of the gospel are often targets of such tactics. I hear it all the time. Pastors grumping about this pastor in Texas or this pastor, you know, wherever they might be. You've got a big church and everything else. They surely can't be preaching the gospel. Oh, it's pure. <coughs> you know, it's just mall church. Just nothing but entertainment. <laughs> Maybe you've heard that. Another reason for a critical spirit is immaturity. Believers must always keep their focus upon Christ and His Word, not on human beings who will often fail. The Word says in uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, Looking unto Jesus. Who are we supposed to look unto? Jesus. Amen. The author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the very throne of God. Immaturity. It's one of the reasons why I just can't, I can't speak strongly enough about the value of small groups. Get connected. This may be a new opportunity this year in this school year that, that we have before us. Get connected in a small group. I see so much healing that takes place in these groups. The young or immature believer who's, you know, doesn't, hasn't progressed very far in their own faith, they remain overly dependent upon the faith of those within the body of Christ. I have folks who come up to me, and I'm, I love it. It's fun. Sometimes they'll come to me and go, Pastor, can you give me a word? Can you give me a word? And I, I go, okay. Well, let me, let me pray for you. I may have a word. Spontaneously, God give me a word. Sometimes God gives words of knowledge for people. But the greatest thing I can direct these people to is grow and mature in your own faith, in your own relationship with Christ. So that you come to know Him who is the perfect well. That you can come and, and enjoy fresh living water that comes from Him, the Word that He has for you. Yeah, but I don't know if I want to do that. That means I, I you know, I've got to read my Bible. I, I've got to spend time in prayer. Yeah. Growing, mature leaders for Christ. It's what we're about at Apostles. Seeing folks grow to the fullness of their faith and the maturity. That's what we're about. Another reason for a critical spirit is an unrenewed mind. Sometimes those put-downs or making fun of, criticism, sarcasm, are the world's ways of reacting to the faults of people. However, as Christians, we don't behave this way. And Paul even exhorted those who listened to the message that our thinking and our attitude is to be renewed by the Word of God, which teaches us to bear the infirmities of the weak, to love, to show compassion and encouragement. The passage, Romans 12, 2, Paul says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is good and acceptable and perfect, the perfect will of God. You know, when we're baby Christians, we still have a very secular mentality. We have a very earthly and carnal mentality. But Paul encourages people that they are to be renewed and that they are to have their mind not conformed to this world, but have their mind renewed. I'll tell you what, nothing, nobody does that better than the power of the Holy Spirit getting in and dealing 
with those places of hurt and brokenness and bringing about transformation. I wish, honestly, I wish that there was a, you know, magic pixie dust that we could sprinkle on baby Christians so that they just all of a sudden, you know, it's like miracles.